Good day everyone, I'm Michael Chung, Chief Investment Officer for Fixed Income at RHB Asset Management. First of all, thank you again for listening to my podcast. Now, the local government bond market continued to reflect its resilience over the past weeks owing to a few factors. On 5th of May, the overnight policy rate was cut 50 basis points to 2%, and this was in line with our view in my previous two podcasts. Additionally, Bank Negara Malaysia has also announced that Malaysian government securities and government investment issue can be used by banking institutions to fully meet statutory reserve requirement compliance from 16 May until 31st May 2021. This was expanded from just principal dealers previously. This compliance flexibility releases approximately ringgit 16 billion of liquidity into the banking system. Combined with the other tools BNM has announced, it is expected to add ringgit 42 billion of liquidity. With rate cut, in addition to this flexibility in SRR compliance, demand for MGS and GRI is expected to remain intact. Malaysia's quarter one GDP grew by 0.7% year on year, better than consensus expectations of a 1% contraction in a Bloomberg survey. It was weakest since quarter three 2009 and quarter one GDP also contracted 2% quarter on quarter, the sharpest sequential contraction since quarter one 2009. Given the movement control order was only eased to a less restrictive conditional MCO or we call it CMCO beginning 4th May, the quarter two GDP print is likely to be worse than quarter one significantly. In terms of the local bond market reaction, the actively traded benchmark 10-year MGS has rallied 6.4% in price terms and its yield has dived 80 basis points lower. In spread terms, between how the 10-year MGS and 10-year US Treasury has performed, we continue to see spread tightening in yields between the two active country benchmarks. Spread has tightened significantly by 54 basis points, recently to 214 from its peak of 267 during the 19 March sell-off. We attribute this increase in demand for MGS, much led by onshore buying since the outflow of approximately ringgit 12 billion then. With hope, we saw some drastic improvement in the number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia. Total number of COVID-19 cases and 31st March was 2,766 and patients that recovered was only then 537, a recovery rate of 19.41%. As at 15 May, while total cases have risen to 6,855, total recovered cases also surged to 5,439, a recovery rate of 79.3% a vast improvement of almost 60 percentage points from a point of low. It is anticipated that this improving trajectory will continue with the CMCO being extended for another four weeks to 9 of June. In its fifth phase, it is expected that almost all economic sectors are to reopen, which will be positive for business and employment in Malaysia. In fighting against COVID-19, Remdesivir, is an antiviral drug made by Gillette Sciences. According to Gillette, Remdesivir has been tested on animals against viral pathogens that are structurally similar to COVID-19 like MERS and SARS, which are also caused by coronaviruses. On April 29, Reuters quoted Gillette as saying that its experimental antiviral drug Remdesivir has helped improve outcomes for patients with COVID-19. The health ministry in Malaysia has started recruiting COVID-19 patients in nine hospitals nationwide to be part of this clinical trial. Scientists created a monoclonal antibody 47D11 that targets the spike protein that gives the new coronavirus a crown-like shape that attacks human cells. In the lab test, it didn't just defeat the virus responsible for COVID-19, but it also defeats SARS. We would like to end this presentation with our outlook on the local ringgit bond market. We remain positive of the market because of the following factors. Firstly, 
some positive containment in terms of COVID-19 in Malaysia. Secondly, we expect Bank Negara to ease the OPR further from the current 2% should the Malaysian economy remain weak in the coming quarters, especially with the likelihood of a very weak quarter 2 number. Additionally, inflationary pressure is expected to remain muted in 2020, with average inflation remaining negative this year due to projection of lower global oil prices. Now, the change in SRR compliance for banking institutions is expected to boost demand for MGS and GII as well. And finally, as part of the latest Monetary Policy Committee statement, Bank Negara has announced that it stands ready to provide liquidity in the interbank market to ensure orderly market conditions and conducive support to financial intermediation activity. With this statement, this is a powerful testament and acknowledgement by the central bank to do all it can to ensure financial markets continue to operate in an orderly manner. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We hope this podcast has been useful to you and gain insights to the ringgit bond market.